Hi, welcome to the channel To Irrational. I'm Pranay Sharma, and in this video, we are going to see some statistical functions that we are going to use in our programming. This is a part of series of videos that I have made on basics of R programming using R Studio. You can check out the previous videos if you have not done so before. Now let's get started. So the first thing I'll do is create a vector called data. Now by now I hope you have understood that the space does not really matter when it comes to writing codes in R. You can use as many space wherever you want. It will ignore all the spaces while it is trying to read the information. So if I write data is equals to and directly create a vector without any space, that is fine. Or if I put space, it will not make any difference. So I'm going to make a simple uh, vector which has random numbers and I'll create a sequence in it. I can use combine in such a way to combine multiple vectors as, as well like I'm doing here sequence and then comma I will also use repeat and I'll use the other sequence as well. I just want some random numbers. That's it. So I have in total 21 numbers you can see here and this is the data whatever. We'll talk about some basic functions. So first function we'll talk about is length. Length gives me the total number of values in that vector. Here you can see length is 21. So this is nothing but so it gives me number of values in a vector. Second you can use max function to find max value data. Here you can see the maximum value is 20. Similarly, you can use min data here 6, 6 is the minimum value. You can use sum. This will give me the total sum of the data that is 281. You can use your basic functions like log. We are going to use log a lot. So whenever you are using log, if I say log data, and then comma you can use a single number or you can use a vector it will not matter it will do log of the whole vector then you specify the base so whenever you are using log you can specify the base let's say log 10 or log 2 or if you don't specify the base it will take by default log to the base e when i press control enter this is nothing but the log of all of the data. Similarly, if you want e raised to, again e raised to, you can take a single value or you can take a whole vector. It will give you the same thing. It is called exp, exponential. And I can give data. So you can see this is e raised to each individual of these values return again as a vector. So I could have written one single value here or I can give the whole vector. You can use product similar to sum. Product is going to multiply each one of those values. Prod. Okay. Here is the multiplication of each one of those values. This is. Multiplication of. Values of vector, right? Then mean, you know, average mean, mean of this data is going to be 13.38. Similarly, you can use median, median is going to be 13. You can use SD for standard deviation. Now, standard deviation is going to be sample standard deviation. Okay. 
that means the denominator will have n minus 1 in the formula. Similarly, variance VAR, this will also give you sample variance. This will also be sample variance. We don't have a direct function to calculate the mode. Mode is going to be the one that has the highest frequency. But you can find frequencies. There is a function called table. Table data. This will give me, these are the possible values. You can see this is called as frequency distribution. So this is going to give me the frequency distribution. So here you can see that these are the possible values and these are the frequencies. So you can see I have 6, 7, 8, 10 only once. I have 12 2 times. I have 13 6 times, 14 2 times, 15 once, 16 2 and you can see these are nothing but the frequency of each of those values. So this becomes a frequency distribution. You can look at the frequency distribution and tell that your mode is going to be 13 because the frequency is 6. That's the highest frequency. So this gives you the frequency distribution. Then if you want to find quartiles, your Q1, Q2, Q3, you have a function called quantile. If I say quantile data. Here, this is the minimum value, 6. This is Q1, that is our first quantile. Second quantile, that is our also our median. Third quantile, 16. And this is the maximum value, that is 20. So this gives you minimum Q1, median Q, Q3, as well as maximum value. But if you want only specific, if you want only the third quartile, you can specify in this quantile function. Okay, quantile data comma 0 0.75. This will give me the third quartile. So this is we'll call it as 75th percentile. Okay, because this is specifically 75th percent. You can use this to find any specific percentage. If I write 0 0.9. It will give me the 90% value. So this is 90th percentile. Okay. Percentile. Or you can also call it as 9th decile. However, however you want to see that. Okay. Or it just means that 18 is the value below which 90% of the data lies. So like here, 16 is the value below which 75% of the data lies. Similarly here, 12 is the value below which 25% of the data lies. Similarly here, 18 would be the value below which 90% of the data lies. So similarly, you can find quantile, okay, by uh, changing this value to any value you want. If you want two values or four values, you can specify that using a vector here. Like if I say quantile, quantile data comma C, I want let's say Q1 and Q2. So I'll say 0 0.25 comma 0 0.75. And when I press control enter, I'll get 25% and 75%. That is a Q1 and Q3. So in this manner, you can uh, find multiple percentiles or multiple quantile values you, by giving those specific numbers in a vector. Now, before I talked about sample standard deviation and sample variance, that means the denominator is going to be n minus 1. If you want to find the population variance, that means with the denominator n, you can easily do that. First thing I'll do is, I'll write n as length of the data. See, whenever I'm writing a function, it will give you suggestions. There are many functions that start with len. That is why it is giving me all the options. I can go up and down 
and choose whichever I want. I actually want this length. And then I'll press tab. Okay. I'll press the tab button. We'll complete even with the brackets. So I don't have to type everything, especially when we have very long functions. We can select them from these options. This is what RStudio does for us. So length, data. So now here you can see n has been stored as 21 because the length of the data was 21. Next, if I want population variance, I'll write it as PVAR. PVAR, that is my population variance, is going to be n minus 1 divided by n multiplied by variance of variance of data. So I've used the existing equation, existing uh, formula and just removed n minus 1 from the denominator and multiplied n in the denominator of that formula. So this becomes my population variance. We can check the original variance. This was the sample variance of the data. There will be a slight difference. You can see this was 12.847. Here we have 12.3, 12.2358. Uh, 12 Population variance will always be less than the sample variance. So here we can see that we use vector to store our data and use these basic statistical functions to do our statistical analysis directly on that data. That's it for this video. In the next video, we are going to see the other method of storing data that is called as matrix. I'll see you in the next one.